Hi, my name is Frankie. Thank you for listening to To My Mom. I never listen. Literally stalking this guy to get him on nothing but net. Head coach Bill Fenley of the Iowa State Cyclones, one of my dear friends and, and longtime uh, partners in crime, if you will, I would say, because uh, we've had a lot of fun together. Bill, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, honored to be here. And when the Hall of Famer calls, you answer. <laughs> so uh, congratulations, first of all, on that. I could not be more well-deserved. What you've done for women's basketball and the fight uh, that you have fought and took it to people that didn't want to listen <laughs> and maybe still don't want to listen at times, but uh, we love you for it. And it's an honor to call you a friend, but thanks for all you've done for so many of these young people that are now benefiting from it. But uh, you did it when it was hard to do it. Now it's a little easier to jump in there, but we appreciate it. Well, thank you for saying that. I've learned a lot from you. You're one of the first and only people that constantly thanks the media for everything they do. And you always show such great hospitality and, I think you always get it. That's why uh, we became friends. And, and yes, now that I am going into the Hall of Fame, watch out, because now I'm really going to be a loose cannon. I mean, what can they do to me now? Right? <laughs> it's like having, uh, you know, you're a Supreme Court justice. you got lifetime freedom to do it. A tenure professor or something. You can do whatever you want now. All Let's in good go. faith, though. All I, can't, in good I, can't, faith. I can't wait. What's coming next? <laughs> Listen, what's coming next is you've got a pretty darn good team, 23 and four right now at the time of this tape, and 12 and three on top of the Big 12 standings, along with Baylor, and a chance to win the outright title because you still have Baylor left on your schedule. Now you have some other work to do, obviously, but um, what's it been like for you, Bill? I mean, you've been doing this for so long and you got a really good team. You know, Debbie, I, I'm really lucky. I, I love coaching this team. You know, we always talk about when you get to a certain part of your career, you don't reinvent yourself, but you, you gotta, you gotta have something that, that motivates you to a different level. And, you know, I, I try and study athletes and coaches and, you know, you don't want to just kind of just go out and not enjoy what you're doing. Uh, this group has been so much fun. Um, it kind of started last year. Uh, no one got to see it because of the COVID stuff, but we got a group that it's very connected. They play hard. Uh, they play the way we need to play. Um, we're not nothing special. You saw us at Baylor and how bad we were there. Um, but it's it's a group that's, that's really embraced. You know, we talk about the Iowa State way. Embrace who we are. Don't apologize for what we're not. Um, and this group has done that. And we played well. We've survived some injuries and a few other things. But uh, it's fun to be playing big games at the end of the year. And we get that opportunity and, and looking forward to – so what, what can happen in March? Bill, how important is transparency in our game as a head coach when, when you're sitting at the top of the game, right? I mean, because you're honest. You tell it like it is. You, you say the Iowa State way. You don't duck anything. You never make excuses. Even your social media post game is, hey, you know, thanking the fans, even though you didn't maybe win that game. No, I, I, think, I think a lot of coaches, um, we need to be better. Uh, you need to be transparent. You need to – you know, you're trying to teach young people, you know, to be transparent. You're trying to do the right thing by people. Everyone has a job to do. Everyone's, you know, yeah, obviously, you know, people get a little protective and they feel sorry for themselves or, you know, the people come after you because you lose a game. That's that's life. I mean, if you don't want to do it, um, then get out. But I, I, I don't think it's fair to to not help the media, to not be transparent with your fan base, because um, that's the way you want to be with your kids. And, and I think we all do better. You know, it, it's not comfortable at times, but I do think we all do better when we 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 are honest and and can share. And 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 unfortunately, our country's in a place where sometimes those discussions don't. No one wants to have them, but uh, I think coaches have a unique platform, and let's let's do it the right way. Uh, I have a couple of nicknames for you. I call you Blueprint Bill. You know, I've called you that for years. You know, I think uh, if I want to figure out how to play another team. I always look at what you're doing because I think you do a great job with your scout and you and it, you're hard to scout because you don't know what you're doing defensively. On one side of the floor, it could be one thing. On another side, it could be something different. If there's personnel on one side of the floor, it could be one thing. Right. Um, how hard is that to get your, your players on the same page? Um, it's harder than it will. I think modern day teams, Debbie, we have not been as good at that as we've been in the past. Um, we've had to simplify some things. This group is learning. 
Um, and I think you have to have a group that really looks forward to coming to practice and like, what's the game plan today? You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like, and again, not everyone does it different. And some teams, this is the way we're going to play. And we don't do that. You know, every game is, is different for us. And we need kids that are cerebral. We need kids that can, can, can change things on the fly, can, can make adjustments. And, you know, we talk about adjust, adapt and achieve all the time. And, um, you got to have a group of kids that, that embrace that. Um, and then you have to have some kids that can, you can, like you, you build your offense around certain things. You got to build your defense around certain things too, that, you know, we have a couple of kids that we really trust to do the right things defensively. We, we've never had a big shot blocker. So we've had to do some things a little bit different, but other than that, this group is, is learned a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a lot of, you know, we're, we're not a great defensive team and we're not going to get credit for it because we don't turn you over, but, we're solid. We, we play the game mm -hmm. the way we play. We're, we're kind of analytically challenged, you know, based and we don't want to foul you and we're going to make you earn it. And we're going to take away your best player, hopefully, and mm -hmm. see what happens. I always joke that everyone's every team we play the best, the fifth starter on the other team's career high is always against Iowa State because <laughs> we let them shoot. So it's like every kid, you know, when I go through the, sh the handshake line, when they're seniors, there's always one kid that thanks me because I let them, I let him shoot too much. <laughs> That's great. The other thing that I like to call you is this time of year, you become bracketology bill, right? Every year at the tournament, you and I are going back and forth on text about who's in, who's not, why. Uh, it's really fun. Right now, your team, according to Charlie, is number two in the West. And in that region is us. In Spokane would be Stanford as the one, LSU as the three, and Notre Dame as the four. I know it's going to change, but to be on the two line right now, that's going to make you feel pretty good. What What do you think? Um, yeah, it, it makes me feel good. Yeah, I, I think, Debbie, as you know, like you said, it is going to change. I think the unique thing is I don't know that we're a two, but I don't know who is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, the, the you know, the, the give and take and the way that the schedules have fallen in, in a lot of the leagues that everyone's playing each other. You know, the Big Ten's playing each other and we're playing each other and the SEC and the Pac-12. So it's like all these teams that you thought were going to kind of keep moving uh, up are kind of like flattened out. So, um, you know, obviously the initial thing is always, you know, now that we're back to having fans, is it, can you get in that top 16 and play at home? And for us, that's mm -hmm. that's a great thing because we have a phenomenal uh, crowd, crowd uh, following. But, um, you know, for me, I'm always one of these people that, that, that I tell our fans this, the number to the left of you on Selection Sunday, which I love now that Selection Sunday, I love that it, we're back to that. Yes. Thanks. Again, another thing that you could put in your Hall of Fame speech, so you had something to do with. <laughs> um, the number to your uh -huh. left only says what color jersey you're wearing. I'm much more this time of year. It's a matchup thing to me. Um, the two, sure. seven, three, six, that doesn't matter. I mean, I'd rather have a matchup than a number. And mm -hmm. I think we all, kind of look at that and hopefully uh, when that bracket comes out and our name is on there, uh, we'll have a chance to do some things. So uh, you referenced defense, which, you know, neither one of us really like to talk about that. So we're not going to spend any time on it, but I do agree that just because you're not an up the line over playing team doesn't mean that you're not playing defense. So let's just clear right. the air there. And right. in my broadcasts, I will talk about defense, but I really prefer talking about offense because I think that's, the greatest measure of the growth in our game is how good the product is. I've been saying the product is the narrative. One of the things that I want to clear the air with right now is that I have been saying this phrase and I learned it from you. And this goes back at least 20 years, maybe longer, but put on the earth to do what? And the answer is score. Amen, brother. I mean, right. That's what we're talking about, right? We're, we're, yeah. I mean, we're, it's one of the few sports you can't shut the other guy out. You know, it's not a baseball game. It's not a soccer game. It's not a football game. You got to score. And, and I think for our game, people want to see scoring. Uh, they want to see the ball go in the basket. They want to see you get up and down. They, they I, I think that's entertainment. Um, we've always shot the three a lot. You know, we've always, the joke here, which is not really a joke is shoot it before you throw it away. Kind of thing. <laughs> I, mean, like that, right. I mean, that's the way we want to play. And um, I, I just, that's just the, that's the way we built our program. And um, I, I do think it's entertaining. I think the game has grown 
Um, we're not in a, like I see in the big 12 now on the men's side, it's a rock fight every night. I mean, they yeah. are just, it is hand to hand combat. And yeah. even our fans who are the most loyal fans in America are excited because our men beat West Virginia last night, 84 to 81. And all they talk about is the 84, you know, and, right. and I, that's, you're right. I think that's where the game's got to continue to go. Well, that's where I spend my time. And uh, I think it's pretty clear that that's what I care about um, and, and helping our game evolve. I mean, I, I, from a marketing and promotion standpoint, I mean, I think there's um there's a lot of things that have changed in our game. I'm not going to get into name, image, and likeness or really the transfer portal, but I do want to see if you'll comment on this. I think the one thing about the transfer portal that has helped women's basketball is not that you can just get a player immediately and make your team better, but it is for some coaches to play a little faster because if you don't play kids and figure out a way to get them on the floor, they're not sticking around. So if you really want to keep them, you got to play them. Do you see any of that happening in pace and study of the game that you're doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, kids come in and they want to go to a place where they're going to play and they're going to get to score and shoot. And, and, and every kid wants to tell you, Hey, what's your style of play? Let's, let's play a little bit. And I mean, you don't have to be crazy loyal, loyal to Marymount men. Right. I mean, but play with a little pace, you know, and, and kids, okay. That's what you told me. Well, if I'm not getting to do it and I'm not getting to do it now, they have an option. And I do think it's important. And kids are paying a lot more attention to that. You know, kids that we're recruiting now, that is one of the very first things, you know, how are you going to play? Where am I going to play? You know, I don't want to be stuck on the block. I don't want to be standing in a corner. I want to, I want to play. And they, that's what they see on TV. They see that in the WNBA. They see it, you know, in the NBA, they, they don't want to walk it up and, not be involved offensively uh, and they know that if it doesn't work, then they're not, you know, they can just leave and, and find somebody who's going to do it for them. So this might be a chicken and the egg kind of question, but I'm just curious to get you to react to this. Which comes first, the Iowa state way or Hilton magic, or is it Hilton magic? And then the Iowa state way. Um, that's a great question. I, personally, for me, I think the Iowa state way had to come first. I think our fans needed to see this is how we are going to do things. It was not, it's not just a slogan. It's not just a, a, a something we put on the wall to cover up a hole in the wall or something. This is real to us. And I think our fan base, and you know, you've been to Ames. This is middle America, hardworking Midwest. Right. You know, we don't care. It, it's eight degrees here and we got people walking around in shorts, you know, it's just, it's just, it's who we are. I'm not saying it's better or worse. It's just who we are. And I think when people saw that and we piggybacked off the men's magic, the, our men's fan base is phenomenal. And so we kind of evolved. But I do think the Iowa State way of doing things because of the women's game, the connection to the fan base, you know, the, the media stuff that we did, the grassroots growth of our team from the from the first day to today, uh, people needed to see that, embrace that. And we're just really lucky they have. So part of the Iowa State way, I know, is family. And you're so fortunate to you have your son, Billy, with you on the bench. He's been you a long time. Lindsey Metter is one of your great point guards in the history of your program, is, is your daughter-in-law. You've got a couple of grandkids from them. And then, you know, Stephen's over there at UNI, and he's doing a heck of a job for Tanya Warren. We had her on the podcast um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, just kind of explain from, from your lens what it's like for you to watch, you know, your two young men that have grown up in Ames and, and they've both sat on your bench, Billy's still on your bench and just, you know, what that has meant for you and Deb, your wife. Yeah. I, I tell you, Debbie, I, I really don't know. Women's basketball is the family business for us. And, and, you know, my dad ran a gas station his whole life and that was his family business. And it is for us. And, and I'm blessed that our administration allowed Billy to join us. Um, like you said, with Lindsay, I didn't know I gave her a scholarship for life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, but, but she, she gave me two beautiful grandkids. And then Steven, like you said, you and I, two great grandkids there is beautiful bride. Andrea um, loves working for Tanya. Tanya has been a great boss. And that Debbie, that was big for me because I, I, I really tried to talk both of my boys not to go into coaching. Um, they wanted nothing. They wanted to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm proud of them. They're good at it. Uh, they enjoy it. Uh, but I wanted Steven to be with someone that 
he could learn not just to be a good coach, but be a better person. And Tanya is mm-hmm. that. Um, he loves you and I, and we're lucky. It's an hour and 20 minutes away. So I get to see all my grandkids. My wife sees a lot of basketball. So if you need a, if you need a Valley insider for the tournament, <laughs> call them, she's seen them all play. She- <laughs> I got her. I got her on speed dial. I know Deb knows what's going on. Uh, she's seen a lot of hoops for sure. Um, I think that's so cool uh, that uh, you have such kind words to say about Tanya because Tanya is um, she's she is as solid as it gets. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this. I think it's OK. The statute of limitations has probably run out on this by now. But, you know, I knew about Billy and Lindsay before you did. Oh, uh-huh. uh, you know, in that back of that layup line, you know, when you guys are warming up and uh, I'm standing back there talking trash to your players. And Lindsay talked the best trash to me of any player, I can say, that was currently in a uniform, right? But oh, I, yeah. I had an idea, I had an inkling that so, something was going on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think I was the last to know, you know <laughs> which is not shocking. But, and she, you know, Lindsay's from California, so she's got that little, you know, left coast uh, talking <laughs> right. going on. You know, she, she, you know, she grew up worshiping Kobe Bryant and – you know, she thought she could do say and talk like Kobe. So I guess uh, whatever it took, yeah. but you, it made her a better player. <laughs> she was a great player for you. Speaking of great players and having the opposite personality is Ashley Jones. Totally the opposite of what we just discussed about Lindsay. What's it been like coaching her for four years, Bill? And and what's her upside? You know, Debbie, it's been it's been great. I mean, she she accepts hard coaching. You're right. Uh, the joke around here, she's going to score more points than words spoken. Um, <laughs> she's very stoic. You you can't tell if it's good, bad, or in the middle. If that ass is ass, but you can get into her. You challenge her. She's grown. Uh, she's accepted, you know, different roles. Um, I think she's enjoyed this team. I, she's, she, she's a pro in my mind, but it's, it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that league is really hard to make. Um, but, you know, she can really score it. Her defense is better than people think. Her ball handling's improved. She might be a tweener size-wise uh, in the mm-hmm. WNBA. But, you know, I, I, I think, she, you know, she, you know, our fans, will, you know, she talks a lot. You know, Bridget is a reminder. She's right. a big Bridget guard. Carlton. Bridget Carlton. Yeah, Bridget Carlton, who's Canadian national team now with the Minnesota Lynx. But she found that Bridget will tell you. I mean, she went to Connecticut and got cut. And, and the Lynx – it was a perfect fit. Only one team needs to like you. And the Lynx is a perfect fit for Bridget. And I hope Ash can find that perfect fit, but she's an amazing kid. She's from our state. Um, Our fan base loves her. She wants to be an elementary school principal. Um, She's going to be very successful. And I hope that uh, we've done our part to help her get to the next level. Well, there's no question she's going to have success. I mean, she's one of 17 players right now in the country averaging better than 20 points. Your team is second in the nation in three-point makes. Uh, you're only like a, a three behind Florida Gulf Coast. So let's see if you can do something about that, Bill, with the left remaining games coming up. Okay, all right. You'll work on that, right? Yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to shoot it, I promise you. But <laughs> you got to make a let, few. We made a few last night. That helped. Let me uh, run this little scenario past you and just get your reaction to it. Okay, because we don't have a lot of places in women's basketball to have these discussions. As a matter of fact, we don't have very many platforms at all. Um, but let me just th- throw this at you because this is what's on my mind. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, Aaliyah Boston is the best player on the best team. Caitlin Clark is doing something in the women's game and leading the nation in scoring and assists that no one has ever done. Only Trey Young did it on the men's side. Okay. She might not even be the Big Ten Player of the Year. Nas Hillman could be the Big Ten Player of the Year if Michigan finishes ahead of them in the standings. In the Big 12, Nalissa Smith could be the number one draft pick. But Ashley Jones could be the Big 12 Player of the Year. So there's a lot of different scenarios there to discuss. What's your reaction to all that? No, I I agree. And and I think those discussions uh, need to be had. And I think it's evolving uh, where people are now paying attention, they're like, okay, are you going to win the Heisman Trophy because you're the quarterback at Alabama, because you're the best player on the best team, or who is the best player? Then we get into most outstanding player, most valuable player, um, who did the most for their team. Um, you know, what Caitlin's doing is amazing. Um, the, the the eyeball she's bringing to, to women's basketball, uh, Aaliyah Boston is, like you said, a, a first-team All-American on a – on the on the the best team in the country and 
so yeah, I, I do think that those are discussions that we haven't had because we really haven't had to. Now there's kids doing things differently and not at the, you know, they're not at UConn, you know, or maybe even at Stanford. Right. The programs that normally now obviously Paige got hurt. So, you, you know, that, that changed it. But I do think it's going to be an interesting discussion that we have not had in a while because we really haven't had to. There's going to be some people left off of certain things and people are going to be like, really? You know, and especially right. for a casual fan who doesn't follow women's basketball, like, you know, just the guy down the street, you know, who, who you're like, oh, what do you mean she's not the player of the year? She just scored 44 and or whatever. So, uh, and we hear it a lot because obviously Caitlin's in our state. So there's a lot of discussion about that. And there was a big article the other day about she might not even be the big 10 player of the year, like you said. And yeah. people were apoplectic about that. But Naz is Naz and it is what it is. So it, it, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, postseason award uh, year for a lot of people. I wish we had a place to have these kind of discussions outside of just, you know, my little podcast here. There's just really, that's one area that the game um, needs. I have been after Sirius XM radio for a long time, just for a weekly hour that we could have women's basketball where people could call in and we could have these discussions in one hour. You could get a lot done. So we'll keep working on that bill. Maybe that'll be the next thing for us. Maybe we'll do that together. Coach K's got beyond basketball, basketball and beyond. I mean, There's no reason why we shouldn't have something like that on the women's yeah, side. No, yeah. And I think, I think it would be a great thing. And like you said, it, it creates conversation and transparency and th- that's never a bad thing. And if it's done the right way and you, you get people passionate about their player, their school, but let's have a discussion right. and people, we can learn, we can learn. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Or that doesn't make sense. But mm-hmm. if you don't discuss it, it's just going to be an article that someone complains about after the, the selection of the, all-American team or right. players of the year. And we could have had a better discussion about it way before that even happened. And you know, we're not about complaining. We're all about providing an idea or a solution. We're not over here complaining about our game. We're trying to that, find ways you, Debbie, to that, help it. I tell you, Debbie, that's the one thing that every single person will say about you. You're not in it to complain. You're into like, let's find a way to make it better. Okay. We have issues. I'm not just going to say we have issues. We, let Let's try it. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. But I mean, just sit around and complain about things. You know, there's way too many people Mm -hmm. like that in the world. No, that, that, that crap doesn't cut it. Let's just, let's stick our nose in there, take a chance. Hey, I'm doing it for the right reason. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. But just to sit there and complain about what's not getting done and not having a solution or, or a proposal Mm -hmm. to a solution. That's why there's too many meetings. You know, people who meet a lot don't work. (laughs) You know, let's go. Somebody do something, and we're in a sport that needs it. You got to throw stuff yeah. at the wall, and it, you never know what's going to stick. You can't just move this pile of paper over to this pile and then go to the next meeting and move this pile over. I think we have a lot of that going on. So, uh, you yeah. know, we'll we'll see who the next czar is. When the next czar takes over, that's when we'll get some stuff done. Uh, but, uh, Bill, um, just parting shot for you. I mean, um, whatever is good for the cause, you know, what, what would you be interested in finishing up our podcast with? Oh, wow. Um, I, I just hope people really can embrace where the women's game has gone. And there's so many new teams and so many new stories. And um, I, I just think there's so many people that have invested so much and you see what Texas A&M did for Gary Blair. And um, mm-hmm. you know, at some point, at some point, these people are not going to be around, whether they're players or coaches and, you know, what Tara's done and what Dawn's done and Gino and Doug Bruno, who's going mm-hmm. in with you to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I mean, I just hope people take a step back and go, there's a lot of people that have invested so much time, so much sweat equity into this uh, and, and celebrate it and, and, and get get on board with it and 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 help these people out because I, I do think there's so many great, great stories to come. It's been a lot of work by a lot of people, but uh, uh, I just hope people stay the course and enjoy what hopefully will be the best women's basketball postseason uh, maybe ever. Amen to that. I, I hope that's true. I look forward to seeing you down the road, Bill. And thank you so much for spending some time with us on Nothing But Net. Thank you, Debbie. It was always an honor. Love you. Be well. Say out to the boys.